realize life is the same thing. Whether you were born poor is the cards you were dealt, or whether you were done, you, you, were, you, you were born rich. It's got no significance to how you're gonna end your life, is how you play. Yes, yes, welcome to another episode of the Rags to Riches podcast. Today, I'm so, so excited. I've got one of my best friends. Um, you know, he's traveled hours to be here today, so I'm super excited for this podcast. Uh, this guy, most of you already know him. If you don't know him, I'll let him, I'll let him introduce himself, but he is very, very successful. He's killing it in property, um, and we got started around the same time, so I'm super excited. So, welcome my guest, Nick Dima. Nick, how you doing today, bro? Absolutely good, bro. Thank you for having me. No problem. It's, it's, my, absolute, it's my absolute pleasure, man. So, yeah, man, we got started around the same time, didn't we? Yeah, we did start at the same time, yeah, that's right. Wicked. What time, I mean, how long ago was that? Did, did we get started? I think that was two years ago. Well, actually, yeah, two years something like that. Fantastic. So, for those who don't know you, why don't you just you know share with the viewers who you are um, and what is it that you do? Yeah, sure. So, my name is Nick Timal, and I'm a property investor. Again, the strategy that I'm doing is BRR, and it's been a year since I'm in this property BRR business. And so far, we have eight properties. Now we are looking to buy another one. Again, BRR strategy, as you know, we can recycle and JV as much as possible. Absolutely amazing. But you didn't start it off with BRR, did you? No, I didn't start it. You know everything, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So what, what did you start off with? What was your main strategy when you got started off? So I think 2019, not sure, yeah, 2019, in that year, I started doing rent to rent in London. So I had a job, I had a full-time job. I was in the army, as you know that. So I was based in Wales. So I had a few rent to HMO in London. So the, and I used to travel every week from Wales. So as soon as the weekend, I used to travel from um, Wales to London to manage the property, find tenants, anything that needs to be done, any issue. So you know the hassle of rent to rent and the management. That's how I got started in property with the rent to rent, bro. Yeah. And yeah, I did like two, for two years. And then I thought like, hmm, the time, the effort that I'm putting in the rent to rent business is yeah. good. Yeah. If you have all this business around you, yeah. Like when five, ten minutes an hour drive from you, but it's like three hours drive, four hours or five hours drive, like it's not worth it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the reason I switched to BRR. Yeah. And the good thing is, as soon as I moved into BRR, I started finding people with big money. Yeah. Like well, when I was doing rent to rent, like, there was investor like five grand, grand, ten grand. Now I have investor of like hundred grand, hundred fifty grand cash in the yeah. bank, which is big money, big deals. Absolutely, hundred percent. And I find the same thing as well because. When you foc when your focus changes, you attract the right things. Yeah. Um. Because when I started doing rent to rent, it's very very good. I mean, I wouldn't change it for a thing. Because obviously, for doing rent to rent, we learned a lot of things, didn't we? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We, we, you know, we made loads of mistakes. And it's easy when you obviously have got you know a thousand pounds rent, a thousand pounds rent, you know, for you know on a free contract. If anything goes wrong, you got a break clause. You can always just hand the key back, which is amazing. Yeah. Whereas if you buy a property, like they just you know both you and I not, it's just, it's so challenging, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You, you can't just go back to the you know to the mortgage broker and be like you know what this deal doesn't work here's the keys back <laughs> <laughs> no, you, can't do that. you can't do that so rent is a great place to get started and i wouldn't change it for a thing um but we've moved on to that but before you got started in in, in brs before you got started into rent to rents you know what's your background i mean you know where are you from a country you from um and you know what did you do for a living prior to getting started up in rent to rents so i'm originally from nepal so I joined British Army in 2017. Yeah. Then I came to the UK. So that's why you can see the different, you can hear the different accent. So I'm from Nepal and I joined the British Army. So I served in the Army for five years as a British worker. I served in the Army for five years. Then I started like, I need to do something big. I need to get into something that only minimum people are known, none have done this. And I came across book, books. I started uh, investing in personal development books. Then I came across like, investment real estate assets liabilities then I can like, I need to get something done yeah that's the reason I came across the videos attended seminars then started getting rent to rent now I'm BRR now that is absolutely amazing and what year you said you came to the UK 2017 2017 January 26 wow and when you came to the UK you came because you were in the army yeah amazing are you still in the army now or have you left I left yeah cool amazing well I mean, it's absolutely amazing, man. You've been here since 2017. If we do the maths, that's about five years. Yes, five years. Yes. Of, you know, risking your life in the army. I mean, obviously, I've never been in the army, so I don't really know, you know, are you actually risking your life or is it just, you know, a normal, a, a, another job? Why don't you tell me a bit about that? 
uh, in army it depends it depends because there's a ton of different regiments it depends where you are for me i was uh, I, I was in infantry i was i did my sniper course i was sniper for a year i did machine gun and i was in afghanistan as well i, was, I did the operation so it depends where you are and which regiment you are yes if you are infantry and if you are going out you're going in operation yeah there's a time when you are risking yeah things like that yeah i was in operation in afghanistan 2019 that is really, really good. Now, the main, the main reason why I started this podcast is not just to share property tips because there's loads of individuals who obviously have got property channels and they this is property strategies. So my main thing is to obviously work on the thing that's the I, I believe is the most important thing to get started off in business, to get started off in property, and I, I believe that's your mindset. So you've been in the army, you've been a sniper, you've been in the infantry, which I, which I, I believe that as a front line, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Is there anything that you learned from doing that that you will now use in property that, that's helped you as a result of, of what you learned you know, back in the army? Yes, bro, there are a few things that I've learned in army and I'm still using it in my business and I'm really grateful for that. Things like that I've discussed in one of my videos as well. Things like that is like mindset. You need to you, when you are in the army, you get the mindset, strong mentality. For example, imagine you are in jungle, right? It's two a.m. in the morning. It's really cold, cold, freezing cold, and your boot is all wet because of rain. Now you need to get up. You didn't have enough sleep. You just had um, let's say half an hour sleep. Now you need to get up, and you have a boot who's full weight and water is in it. Now you do have to walk for uh, I don't know for four hours, five hours. Wow. You have no rest, no food, right? And you have to walk. So. I'm, I came from that kind of background with that mentality and which helped really helping me to be honest this business whatever I'm doing the, the grind everything is luxury because I can travel right there's no like I don't have to wake up all night I can have good food I mean good sleep I can still operate I mean 100 this is crazy things that I learned from uh, my army is crazy yeah now it's a good thing that you say that because that kind of like you know reminds me and and that's why i think me and you get along very well because we have very similar bringing almost i was in the army but because i came from really 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 humble beginnings and because i came from you know from having from not even having a toilet in my house not having a television like when i was a kid for me now everything that i do is a lot is easy it's not actually easy, but the reason why I say it's easy, same thing as what you said, because both you and I go a point of reference, mm -hmm. because we came from some, you know, things that was so difficult, everything after that becomes easy. So like you were in the army and you were doing all this risky stuff. So now you do property. It's, it is hard mm -hmm. to the average person, but compared to what you've done before, it's not, it's not really hard. So what, what would you say is the one thing that you've learned? That's really, I mean, I, I'll share mine with you. One thing that I've really learned when I got started, um, that's really helped me in business now is obviously I got started when I said humble beginners a lot of people don't really understand how how humble that I got started I'm like really 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 bad and one of the things I used to do I've, I've always been a hustler you know back then I never knew it, it was called entrepreneur I was just a hustler because being born in an island that's got less than 200,000 people population in St. Lucia jobs and making money opportunities are, are, are very small mm -hmm. so everybody has to do whatever it takes to put food on the table yeah. so one of the things I, I, that, that i started to do is there was a lot of gambling happening people were gambling to make money to, to obviously you know put food on the table yeah so there's a game in st lucia called brags it's very similar to poker right but you play the three cards as opposed to five cards and people used to play that frequently mm -hmm. but they used to play it in bars and clubs the issue with bars and clubs is they used to close at a certain time okay you know and there used to be a lot of noise from drinking mm -hmm. and stuff so i used to go to those bars and i used to see these people come i'm like how and I, and I used to play as well and i was like sometimes i used to win sometimes i, I didn't used to win so I was like, how can I make this game every single day, it's, it makes me a profit? And how can, I, how can I add value to those players? So what I did was, I actually bring that game yeah. into my brother's house. So my brother, yeah. I used to bring those people in, in, in my, 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 my brother's living room. I used to bring those people here, there's no noise. Yeah. They can play all night up until the morning. I give them coffee, I give them drinks. And the only thing that they have to do is every few games, I used to get some money from the pot. So that way I can never lose. So the longer they play is the more money I make. For them, it's a luxury because they can put their feet up. If they lose their money, they, they can go sleep in the corner. They have coffee, they have tea. But why am I saying this to you? Because when, when I was hosting those games, I, I was the only one walking around the table and I used to see everybody's cards. Okay. Now that game is one of the games that 
if you if 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 you've been dealt a very good hand, like a royal flush, for example, or three aces, you know, um, a, a, a pair three, you automatically got the best game in the, the best game on the table. Yeah. So you have a very strong chance of winning the game. Yeah. However, if somebody hasn't got a very good game, but they're very good bluffer, they come across, you know, they, they raise the stakes. Anybody can win the game. So I saw people win because they, 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 they were dealt a good hand. And I saw individuals who used to win and they used to have the sheetest hand on the table. Mm, so but the way you used to tell them, like, I have, they act as if they had the Exactly, yeah. exactly. So right there and then, so you know, reality hit me. And I realized right there and then that life and this card game was not about the, the, the hand you were dealt. It's about how you play the hand. And I took that whole metaphor and I adapted it to life and I've realized life is the same thing. Whether you were born poor is the cards you were dealt or whether you were, done, you, you, were, you, you were born rich. It's got no significance to how you're going to end your life is how you play. So that's one thing I've learned from where I, obviously, you know, where I grew up to where I am now. Um, and that's one thing that's helped me. What, you know, what? What's that thing that's, that's really helped you to kept you, you, you know, kept you keep going to be doing right now? I mean, what's the main, you know, what are the main things that you've learned? What I learned yeah. by doing this, or what, yeah. why I'm doing all this work. Yeah, I mean, what, what, what's one of the biggest, you know, things that you've learned for obviously where you came from, um, you've been in the army, that's really helped you propel um, yourself and your success to where you are today? Yeah, so, like I said, we know the background, yeah? So no, we know the people, the hard work they used to do. For example, let me give you an example. Uh, I don't know if you have seen the people like in, in your country, in your background or not, but we have a people, for example, there's a bus in the bus stop, yeah? So there are people who are selling um, cucumber. They cut the cucumber, put the salt all over it, and in a plate, they carry the cucumber, and they run with the bus so that any customer can pick up and give them money. So I've seen that level of work, and how much they make? Not much. And, but they risk their life, isn't it? Running after the bus to just to sell those things. And looking at that, I'm like, I can do this. I can the way I, what, the, whatever I'm doing, I can all day, every day, every night, I can do this because I've been working in the army. I know how it work, feels to work in day and night. I'm like, this is. I even I, I spoke to my wife as well, Lichia. I said like, this is luxury. This yeah. is luxury. Whatever we're doing, whatever we have seen, whatever we're doing. Hundred percent. 100% that's that's very very true man and you know it's it's something I live by because obviously the, the hard work I've done same thing as uh, same thing as you for me what I'm doing now is a lot easier mm -hmm. you know um, so it's amazing so you started off doing rent to rent I mean what's what's one of the biggest challenges that you had when you you know got started off your rent to rent part, um, you know I'm um, journey biggest challenge I think I'll tell this I'll tell it summarize in most people they might say the finance but for me Finance wasn't an issue for me. It was this time because there's only few people that go into social media and they ask for investment, right? And I was one of them. Especially in my community, there's none people going into social media and asking for investment, mm. which makes me like I'm the only one person. Yeah. And people trust because there's no one, no one have the guts to go into social media and ask for investment for the business. And because of that, it made me, it gave me real opportunity and option the finance. I would say the main issue and challenge I had in rendering this time, that's the only issue I had because I'm, I'm, I'm in the army, based in Wales, I have to drive down to London to manage the property, to find the tenant. In one night I drove like, so I, I, finished, I, I finished my work at 5, so I had a tenant viewing at 8pm in, in London, one of our property. So hold on a minute, say that again. So I finished my work at 5. 5 in the afternoon. Yeah, 5 yeah. in the afternoon. And I had viewing at 8 p.m. Wow, so you had to That's travel for hours. That's I arranged because I said I'm busy. This is the time I can arrange. Wow. Now I had to manage the time to go and do the viewing. And, however, I made it. It's three hours drive. I made it. I did the viewing. And I came back for tomorrow work. Yeah. It's crazy. The time is there. So you used to obviously invest a lot of time commuting yeah. back and yeah. forth. Fantastic. That's really, really good. I think you've hit the nail on the head. You know, I invest a lot of time in rent to rent. When I got started off, to be fair, in rent to rent, it does, because it, 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 I think what a lot of people don't realize rent to rent is not a property investment, mm -hmm. it's a property business. Yeah. So, which means you need to exchange, you, you need to give time up front, you need to obviously put in the work. You can't just get rent to rent and just feel like I'm not gonna, do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm gonna retire, it'll be passive. In rent to rent, it's never passive, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You have to come up with different strategy, how to attract tenants and keep them in the house. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. It's, I, it's different business. Yeah. Listen, I love rent to rent. You know, if, if I got tired of, if I lost everything again, I would get tired of with rent to rent. Yeah. Um, you know, and deal selling. So I, I, I really do like it. But obviously, there's a, if without the knowledge of knowing what to do, it's, it's, it's difficult, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Sense. So it's um, you know, it's very challenging. But now you move them from rent to rent. You, you, you're now doing BRR, as, as you said earlier. Yeah. Um, and you've been doing that for a year. You said. Yes. Yeah, what What would you say has been your biggest challenge in Starting off your, your BRR business. The biggest challenge in this business, uh, over here in this business, was kind of fine. I would say fine is because we had like in this, so when you started uh, BRR, when I started BRR, I had 70 grand raised finance. So again, the issue is time because I was still in the army full time. Mm. So the main issue was time. So I had to travel north. It's like five hours drive. So that's the only issue I had time. So because, and that's how I managed actually. That's how I did. I got my first house. Right up in north, then I travel every Friday evening. I used to travel with the wife. I used to travel over there, find the property, manage the builder, come back again. That's how I manage, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. So that's very, very good. Um, and so your main, your, your main challenge again was the time. It was time. Yeah. So you've been doing this for a year now. You said it's been a year now. Yeah. Cool. And how many properties that you've not, that you've now accumulated by doing that? By doing that? Uh, eight. Eight. That is really Looking good. Bro. Nine one, I already kill it, bro. Kill it. Very much. Absolutely kill it. And have you got a specific area that you that you target for properties, or do you just find properties anywhere? I mean, what's your sort of like? Yeah, so that's a good question actually. When I started, I was just all over the place. So wherever I can find it. Now I'm trying to make a patch. Yeah. But I don't want to stay specific in the patch because well, if I stick, there will be like limited opportunity. Got you. However, I'm open with the number. I'm trying to make as much as possible around my patch, which is Lincoln. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. And you know what? I'll share. I'll tell you something. As we both did rent to rent, the good thing I learned from rent to rent is referencing tenant. Yeah. Because in rent to rent, you do the referencing. Exactly. Yes. That's Correct. what I've learned, and that's what I'm grateful for from rent to rent. I learned to reference tenant whenever there's tenant in my house. I do all the tick that I used mm. to do in rent to rent, even though. Agent have done that, but I still do it to make 100%. sure. One hundred percent. Yeah. One hundred percent. Because you know, you pay you pay the agent to you know for managing and to get tenants in. But if you don't know what they're doing, yeah. and if you don't know how they're doing it, it's easy for them to pull the wool over your eye because you know how to reference yes, tenants. Yes. Because you know how to find tenants. It's like, do you know what I mean? If they're not doing it properly, like you know when they're charging you too much, you know when they're taking too long, kind of thing. So that's amazing. And and again, that's why I like rent to rent. I just said I learned I learned referencing. I use I started off using open rent. Mm -hmm. For my first set of referencing, which is like you know, next it's peanuts uh, to obviously you know reference through open rent um, to like now obviously having the, having the particular strategies to get tenants. I mean, I love HMOs. I, I love to obviously you know do BR to HMOs, um, but giving agents to obviously get you know five, six, seven, eight, ten tenants sometimes can be very long winded. Mm -hmm. But because we did rent to rent, we know we can obviously you know spend two days and get a ten bed HMO field. So. That's really amazing. So now you're doing, you know, you came from rent to rents. You're now doing BRRs. I mean, what, what's next for you? What's, you know, what's the next, the next step? The next step would be um, now to go with bigger deals. I started with small, 30, 40, 50,000 houses. Okay. 50,000 worth of houses. Okay. Now it's time to level up, scale up. Amazing. Yeah, we have a new mentor now, which I'm really excited starting our mentorship from next month. Okay. It's for 12 months where we learn about now we learn about bigger deals, how to raise a million pounds, do million pound deals. So now we're trying to expand and scale our business. Yeah, that's really, really good. I mean, and you know, I got started off with obviously, uh, you know, Samuel Lids. Um, you know, we both did. Really like him. A really amazing guy. And, you know, one thing that he said to me that I, that I, I live by, he said, obviously, every deal that you do must be bigger than your last. Mm -hmm. um, so every deal that I do, I try to obviously get a bigger one, you know, a bigger one. And my first BR I was, you know, and you know, conveying a house to a nine-bedroom HMO. So it's to massive, isn't it? So that's a good. So I, so I got started a very big. Yeah. So for me now, I have to find something bigger, yeah. which you know is a bit challenging, but it's good because you know it keep pushes you, it keep mm. getting you out of your comfort zone, and keep stretching you to obviously do, you know, bigger and better things. So look, man, Nick, you in the army, um, and you know, I'm from the Caribbean. I've got loads of friends who came from the Caribbean. Um, and they came through the army. I mean, I, I even got a brother mm. who, who did that as well. Yeah. And I speak to a lot of them. A lot of them are like, cool, man, I'm in the army. I really want to get out. 
don't really know how I can do this. I want to get tired of the property. And there's loads of people to be fair, not, not just people in the area, but that's that, that want to get tired of the property, but they don't know where to start. They don't know how to start. Um, what advice would you give them? You know, what, you know, what would you tell them right now that you wish someone told you when you got started? Um, I would say the number one thing is networking. You need to have the right people around you because they can give you advice which they have already gone through the issues, the challenge. Like you said, like when we were having conversations before this about the builders, yeah. you know, about yeah. the big challenge that you are facing and about the challenge that I'm facing. Like you came up with a challenge that where I give you a solution. I came up with a challenge where you get the solution. You see, yes. when you have the right people around you, it's much more faster and easy to go through the challenges and obstacle everything. So I would say right network is really, really key in business. Amazing. So very key thing that you said. So take advice from people who's doing the things that you're doing already yeah. and not from somebody who's... Ten. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That is so key. And that's, that's kind of like my similar advice to somebody gets started. It's like, be very, very, very cautious um, as to who you take advice from. You know, you have, like, you have to be taking advice from people who are doing what you need advice on. Um, so, like, even right now, we both have power teams. Yeah. We have builders in our power teams. We have accountants. We have solicitors. We have mortgage brokers. And my accountant is a very good guy. His name is Raza. You know, I'll introduce you on my channel maybe in the next few videos. Raza is a very, very smart guy. Accountant, right? But Ross has given me mortgage advice. Evans, you don't want to get a mortgage here. And to be fair, I like Raza. But when it comes to mortgage advice, I can't take advice from Raza because Raza is not what? He's not a mortgage broker. Now, my mortgage guy is very, very smart. He wants to give me accounting advice or solicitor advice. I can't do it. So it's very, very important to take advice from, from the right people. I believe if you want to get started in property, make sure you take advice from people who are actually in right now doing property and not somebody who did it five or ten years ago because if five and ten years ago the rules have changed a lot isn't it you know or if your family member has got one house the amount of people i've met and i think you said the same thing as well the amount of people i've met imagine i've got a guy right now who's got 16 properties the guy is actually a millionaire no property millionaire is a millionaire based on the equity that he's got over all of the years mm -hmm. but believe it or not he hasn't really got much knowledge his thing was I got money from business, just put some money and buy a property and let it go up in value, which is fine. Anybody can do that. But to actually push value up and to gain equity and to like get the best return on investment, you need to be of knowledge. Yes, exactly. And to be, doing, to be doing creative things like service accommodation and to be doing HMOs, you need the right knowledge because if you don't, you get blood out of the water. So it's very, very important to get advice from people who are doing exactly what is it that you want to do. So I think... You know, it's um, it's a pleasure as usual. It's always great to obviously have you on there. Um, so in closing, I mean, is there anything that you wanna you, you wanna say in closing to the viewers? Um, you know, viewing this right now. Um, I would say, yeah, do not give up on your dream. Whatever you have, have like I said, I gave you all the message. Have the right network, and for any deals you're looking for, contact him. He's the guy. <laughs> we sure. had a conversation last week. He's so good deals and too many investors and if you are an investor who have money but no time do not wait contact this guy and he'll get the right deal for you amazing and if anybody wants to follow you follow your journey how do they follow you nick so where do they I find you i have my own youtube channel and uh, you can follow me nick timal you can put it in the description yep nick timal and you can follow me on instagram or tiktok nick timal everything i have everywhere i have the same name easy to follow and wherever i share everything Amazing. Well, Nick, it's always a pleasure. Great yeah, to have you on. Um, and in closing, guys, make sure you smash the like button. It helps the video get promoted. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And also turn on the notification bell to get notified when I get updated. So I hope you find value in this video, guys. And peace out. Take care. Bye-bye.